Hi everybody, today we're going to do a brief review of laryngeal cancer staging. For a brief review of the CT anatomy, the larynx consists of the structures from the inferior aspect of the epiglottis to the inferior aspect of the cricoid cartilage. That would be here to the bottom of the cricoid cartilage. There are three anatomic areas for cancer staging. There's the supraglottic region, which extends from the tip of the epiglottis to the laryngeal ventricle. Which you can see the ventricle best on the coronal, where you have that goblet or hourglass shape. The ventricle is that space between the false vocal cords and the true vocal cords. The epiglottis is part of that supraglottic space, as is the pre-epiglottic space, which is mostly fat. The aryepiglottic folds, which extend on either side of the epiglottis. The false vocal cords, and then that paraepiglottic space. The glottis consists of the true vocal cords, the anterior and posterior commissure, anteriorly and posteriorly along the cords. And the subglottis extends from the inferior surface of the true vocal cords, which you see best on the sagittal view, to the inferior aspect of the cricoid cartilage. On axial imaging, the key landmarks are those aryepiglottic folds, which lateral to them are the piriform sinuses. You have the fat of the false cords, which is lower density than the muscle of the true vocal cords to help you distinguish between them. You have the arytenoid cartilage, which can be seen here kind of right at the bottom of those false cords and at the true vocal cords, and the cricoid cartilage, which is posterior to the true vocal cords. Laryngeal cancer staging, separate for the supraglottic and glottic cancers, are listed here. The important thing is for a T1 supraglottic cancer, it's confined to one supraglottic subcut site. And thanks to our ENT colleagues, we can stage it knowing whether the vocal cord has normal mobility or not. That is not something that we can see on imaging. So that is why our tumor board is with ENT to be able to make the proper staging. Whereas an unresectable tumor would be a T4B, which is invading into the prevertebral space, encasing the carotid, or invading down into mediastinal structures. Whereas a glottic tumor, a T1 tumor, is limited to the vocal cord. This may or may not include the anterior posterior commissure. Then you get the T1B, which means it's, it usually extends across either commissure to the other cord. But you get to the very advanced disease, which is the same as the supraglottic, if it invades that prevertebral space, encases the carotid, or invades mediastinal structures. So our first example, take a look at these coronal and axial images. You can see that this aryepiglottic fold is nodular and thickened on the coronal view. You can see it's nodular and thickened on the axial view. So we have a right aryepiglottic fold mass. No lymphadenopathy on these images. Distant meds not assessed. So this is a T1N0MX supraglottic cancer. For example two, we have a subtle glottic lesion. If you window down, you can see that there's a hyperdense appearance of the right anterior cord. It's an anterior third. Hyperdense compared to the left, you see there's a little volume loss of the cord associated with that. On the coronal view, you can see here's the ventricle, here's the superior surface of the cord. There's asymmetric hyperdensity as compared to the left side. So this would be a right anterior true vocal cord lesion, no nodes by size criteria, distant meds not assessed, be a T1 N0 MX. And on the PET scan, you can see it is hypermetabolic. Example three, a less subtle lesion. You have a right true vocal cord mass encompassing the entire right true vocal cord. The left true vocal cord appears spared, but you see there's erosion of that cricoid cartilage posteriorly and loss of the paraglottic fat. On the sagittal view, you can see this is a bulky lesion extending supraglottic as well as infraglottic below the level of the cricoid. And here's the lesion on the coronal. It almost has a U shape. So this mass originates in the right true vocal cord. There's erosion of the cricoid cartilage. There's extension into the paraglottic space, supraglottic and subglottic regions, but no lymphadenopathy and no distant METs on subsequent PET-CT. So this stages as a T3, N0, M0 because of that erosion of the cricoid cartilage and that extension into the paraglottic space.
Next example is a subtle lesion. If you use my example of windowing things down where you're looking for anything that's hyperdense compared to the structures adjacent to it, you'll see that there's asymmetric hyperdensity along the inner surface of both true vocal cords involving the anterior thirds of the cord and crossing that anterior commissure. On the coronal image, you can see very subtle stripe of that medial surface of the left true vocal cord, a little bit less on the right. No lymphadenopathy, no distant mets. So this would be a lesion that involves both vocal cords. No lymphadenopathy, mets not assessed. So this would be a T1B, N0MX. And last but not least, we have another big lesion. Here you can see a bulky mass extending across the anterior commissure. What's important to this is you see destruction of that thyroid cartilage. And you don't just see it on one side of the cartilage, you can see through and through cartilage destruction. Here's more the bulky mass extending inferiorly. On the coronal view, you see a glottic, superglottic lesion. You see that erosion of the thyroid cartilage. And there is an abnormal left level three lymph node. You see stranding around it, worrying for extracapsular extension of the tumor. That would have to be confirmed on pathologic diagnosis, but we have that suspicion on CT. So this involves the left false cord, the left true cord, and invades through the inner and outer cortex of the left thyroid cartilage. We have one left level three lymph node that is less than six centimeters. We did not assess distal mets on this next CT. So this stages is a T4A, N1, M0. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to everyone for tuning in for Dr. Bailey's review of laryngeal cancer staging. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the additional lectures on head and neck cancer staging, which are available on the channel as well as LearnerRadiology.com. Thanks for your attention and be sure to like the video and subscribe.